in Boston. Josh, welcome to the Bob River Show. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I, I love the message, by the way. I, I love you. what you're doing. Oh, great. You know, we're going to be bombarded with so many commercials throughout our life. And by the way, I love commercials. I think they're a wonderful way to connect wonderful products with me wonderful too. people. Don't you love commercials, Joe? <laughs> uh, yeah. And Josh, year. if you come out too hard against commercials, we may shorten this interview by just a little bit. I need commercials about every half hour. I just don't feel right. Yeah. I agree. Uh, but little children, what, what ages are you talking like? One, two, three? Uh, well, um, we... we we believe that there shouldn't be any advertising to children under the age of eight. Um, eight. Studies, studies have shown that until children reach about eight, um, they don't understand how advertising works. They don't understand right. advertising. Given that we work on a classic hits program, I totally agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, kids don't understand when they're being pitched. It takes a certain maturity to know that, okay, somebody's giving me an option here. Kids think... I believe that you're. They're they're learned to respect when somebody's telling you something. It's right. a, a voice of authority. But how does that relate to these things that you believe are being falsely advertised, like Fisher Price's Laugh and Learn or the Open Solutions games, like Baby Hear and Read? Because those ads are really going out to the parents, not the kids. I think some of the parents are too stupid to be advertised to, don't you? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't. I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. But um, the reason why um, we have been. Uh, so vigilant in trying to hold these companies accountable that market baby media um, is because we believe that one of the best ways to reduce children's exposure to advertising is to um, limit the amount of time they spend with screen media. Um, and we think it's unconscionable that um, these companies are trying to hook kids, you know, at six months, at three months, at nine months on, on screen media um, and doing so in a dishonest way by claiming that these things are education. Ah, that's the other part of your mission in that you say if Fisher Price is going to call it a laugh and learn mobile app, and yet they have no proof or no study that says that kids actually learned anything using this, that that's false advertising. Absolutely, yeah. We have consumer protection laws which um, say that if a company is going to make uh, claims about what their product can do, that they need to be able to substantiate that. Um, and these companies have not produced any research, and the existing research that's done you know, in universities by neutral people has shown that, uh, that, that babies do not learn from screen media, whether it's sure. television, videos, or, or apps. Josh, do you have any young children yourself? I have a daughter who is four and a half. Four and a half. How do you um, occupy her time when you're just too busy? Do you put her under a stairwell behind a locked door? Do you, uh, <laughs> you, do you tie her to a leash? What do you do? Or do you stick her in front of the TV? I mean, what is a parent to do? Well, I think that, um, you know, we, we have, were very uh, vigilant in not letting her have any screen time when she was younger, and I think that that really helped in letting her develop her ability to play by herself um, and entertain herself. I mean, she plays with her stuffed animals, with her dolls, with her toys. Mm. Um, you know, I don't feel like I have to entertain her. I don't feel like that um, she, you know, I need to be on the floor every second. I would go crazy if I was trying to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, she, she has developed, and I think b in part because we've really uh, limited screen time. Yeah. Ability to now, do you, do you ever consider the possibility that you're inhibiting her future growth? Like in the future, um, you know, we're going to have to hit real targets on r screens, you know, for, uh, you know, we're going to have to be able to maneuver in this screen world. Uh, people will no longer actually talk in person anymore. Um, well, um, you know, first of all, you've really depressed me, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's you're welcome. Job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but second of all, I mean, I think that um, one of the things about this technology um, is that it's so easy to use. I mean, parents who worry about their kids getting behind uh, because they don't know how to use an iPad or they don't know how to use a mouse, I mean, kids will pick this up in literally uh, 15 seconds, you know, and um, so I, I don't think it's something we need to worry about. This They'll this learn, yeah. This technology is so user-friendly that, um, you know, my daughter, when she starts using a computer, will be better than me at it probably, you know, by, by the end of the first day. Is this a similar problem uh, just multiplied by by how clever these electronics are to when our parents say parked us in front of the TV. That wasn't good for us either, was it? 
No, but I think what's different is that um, is that it's happening even younger and younger. I mean, there's a difference um, between watching Sesame Street when you're three and a half and um, watching a Baby Einstein video or uh, playing with a Fisher Price app when you're six months or 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 um, you know or, or a year old. Yeah. There's really you know there's so much brain development going on in the first couple years of life. Um, there's so much happening there that it's really um, you know to to teach parents or, or to fool parents into thinking that this is what's best for kids as opposed to interacting with, with adults and uh, exploring the actual physical world. It's really, um, that's what's, what's so upsetting. And you're not against games like uh, when they're a little older and they're playing with a parent or a sister or a babysitter because that's uh, social uh, skill building as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's there's uh, there's a difference between when it's uh, done socially, and I you know I think also um, in moderation. Um, but you know the fact of the matter is is that babies um, are already spending uh, you know an hour and a half to two hours with screen media a day um, before they reach the age of two, um, and that's. Uh, you know, when you think about how much time a baby's sleeping, that's a huge amount of their waking time. Right. Now, Josh, you're an adult, so you can go through that saloon door into the cool app uh, closet behind the end of the video store. What's your? How good are you at Angry Birds? I'm terrible at it. You're terrible. Okay, you have <laughs> tried it. Though. Joe, go ahead. I have a daughter uh, just like you, Josh. I have one, one child now. She's 14, and there were not apps, and there were not iPads when, when she was your daughter's age. But when I needed to take a shower, I would put her in her little baby central, the little thing that she would sit in that she was basically trapped. I would roll some Cheerios out there, and I would throw the Teletubbies on, you know, to keep her happy and occupied <laughs> for 20 or 30 minutes. Now, if I had had an iPad, and I have uh, relatives with young children, and when they need a little time, not to educate, but just to keep the just kids to pacify. happy for, you know, that 20 or 30 minutes that you need to take care of something, they will put the iPad there and let them play a video game. Is that okay? Well, I think there's a couple of issues there. I think one is that um, it's important to try and help kids, uh, to help babies learn how to um, soothe and entertain themselves without um, automatically going to the to the iPad or the screen. Because what's going to happen when you do that is that there's going to be no way for them to do it without the screen. Um, and so, it, you know, it's, it's part of the skills that we should be teaching babies um, at, at, at a young age. Um, but the other part of it is, you know, if, if they were marketing these products as, uh, you know, a way to mindlessly entertain your child for, uh, for, for, for 15 minutes, we wouldn't be filing a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission. Because that would there. be truth in advertising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Joe was so truthful right. when he talked about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's that they're, they, are, they are misleading parents, and, um, and parents should, you know, if we want parents to make, it's, it's a really hard to, to raise children in a digital age, and there's so much um, that we have to balance and consider, um, and parents shouldn't have to, uh, you know, sort through lies in order to make those decisions. All right, so if Fisher-Price renamed the Laugh and Learn to occupy your kid for a shiny, while. Shiny, shiny. <laughs> with something shiny, <laughs> while you get to have a few minutes to yourself game, that would be okay. Uh, we would not, yes. We, we would We'd have no case. Not, we would still encourage parents not to use it. But, yes, um, yes. We would not, uh, we would not be uh, uh, filing a Federal Trade Commission complaint. Josh Cohen of the Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood in Boston. Our texters are really rooting you on, sir, as I am. Good luck with that. Thanks so much. Bye. You know, I thought I was going to disagree with the guy. I thought I was going to get really mad. You know, when I read the thing, I was just like, oh, this guy's going to come on. And I'm going to have to argue with him, but I actually agree with him. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <clears throat> because there are so many products.